Fives, folks. Today we're going to dig into how to help your riders optimize their ride by learning to scan posture for what robs them of greater performance. Uh -huh. So is that that's something we're seeing on the bike or is something that we're seeing off the bike? Where, oh. where do we start to oh. do that? Just look at the way people walk in the room, okay. observe their feet. Yep, so what am I looking for? Ideally, people's feet would be pointing you know, somewhat forward, perhaps a little bit of a turnout, but they would be equal. So yeah. one's turned out, their other one's turned out. Not all the way out, but yeah. you know, not a duck walk, but, no. but looking for nor, nor your yeah. little or like me, is that pigeon? pigeon? Yeah, is that? like me, I'm a little pigeon. I tend to some people that. are like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but as long as you don't have like this. Yeah, I won't go very far forward. <laughs> um, but what what I, is most common is is an excessive turnout. Well, that's going to transfer to the bikes. So okay. if they're not wearing clips, yeah, which you know the idea of clips is to make you more efficient. It's a good point. So when they put their feet in cages, they will eventually migrate back to where they live. You know, which is this external turnout or external rotation. Especially, I would be really aware if someone had more of a turnout on one foot than the other. Yep. Because that's the beginning of the kinetic chain. This is a highly rep repetitive activity. Yep. That's going to just rewire. You know, so, so, if I, so I just came out of my clubs, yep. went into my toe cages. Yep. Um, what I might see as an instructor when I look out is it, is it well, I, well, I primarily see knees, knees out. Right, so it can get yep. pretty complex. I mean, they could just turn out at the ankle. Some people have oh, ankle okay. injuries because you have yep. three joints there. So yep. that turnout could happen just at the ankle. But most times, yep. yes, you're going to see the knees turn knees out. out. So when their toes turn out, because you'll see when they walk in, as they move, if their toes are turned out, their knees are usually turned, turned out Good somewhat point. as well. Yep. That's yep. the big takeaway, is try to connect shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles. When you look at someone on the bike, I'll do the best you can to help that person align yep. so that that transfers off the bike yep. into the way they move and everything else, all their activities. Generally, when I see this, and it's, it's, it does tend to be men, um, because they do tend to be bigger, you know, at, at tighter, times, tighter, tighter rotators. Yep. Yeah. So I see this, and, and I'm just coaching to, I, had, I didn't really realize it was starting with their feet. Um, so I'm just saying things like, remember to kind of, you know, bring your knees in, hug, hug, hug the midline a bit. I mean, is there something else I should be saying if it's knees follow feet? Um, I mean, I know it doesn't, you can have your, can you have your feet aligned and your knees out? Or some people with, you know, yeah. anything's possible. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. <laughs> So, Most so times, yes. is there something I can be coaching differently, or we can be coaching differently when we see knees out? Something that starts with feet. That's a really great point. And the checklist yep. for me starts at the feet. Always right. start at the feet. Yes. So I, I move yes. up the chain. I have heels and toes pointing forward, knees somewhere between big toe and little toe, and then shoulders and hips aligned, hips loaded evenly in the saddle. Now you, now you've got me thinking about how I'm sitting. <laughs> and it's amazing. It's amazing when you say this in the yeah. room. I've seen this so many yeah. times. If I'm, you know, do the same checklist, yeah. and it's, I'm sure some people who ride with me often probably get yeah. tired of it. But yeah. Yeah. Lift and spread your toes, feel the wide part of your foot, big toe knuckle to little toe knuckle. Load the pedal evenly. And that usually, I think, I'm lifting and spreading yeah. my toes. I mean, I'm doing it while I'm saying it. Knees tracking somewhere between big toe and little toe. And I usually do say a slight hug of the midline, slight a slight hug of the midline. Yep. Anchor their hips, yep. sitting bones rooted in the saddle. Scoot your stuff around, that's usually what I say. Scoot your stuff around, find a good place to plant. As soon as I say, lift your spine, the whole room, yeah, look, it's true. Yeah. The yeah. whole room looks like it's baking bread. It's so, <laughs> you know, it's just this like little lift yeah. in the room. So, yeah, I think that that checklist yeah. really helps. Yeah, I, I like that one where you're you're adding the visual, where um, it's a great time to go ahead and yeah. lift your toes to the ceiling. You're going to feel the balls of your feet spread nice and even against uh, across the pedal bars. Yeah. Um, now relax. Be conscious of that through the ride. Yeah, and those visuals, that's another great point, Karen, I think. Uh, but you gotta keep coming back to that. Okay. Because people lose it. Yeah, so, all right. Watching riders walk in, 
uh, are they kind of pigeon toed? Are they, they more outward? Watching for that to transfer onto the bike, coaching um, your checklist of alignment, starting with your feet, um, coming up, knees, hips, shoulders. Um, is there anything else um, that you can adjust or look to correct on the bike? Or are we now looking at that cues that are clues yeah. um, of kind of poor form that they're going to need to, need to strengthen off of the bike so that they can do that there, bring it back here. Yeah, definitely. They're, um, the big things um, are, I, I call this playing piano. You know, someone trying to pull back. And you, I'm sure you've seen this. Totally seen and this. So, all right, so tell me, so I do see this, right? And I'm just coaching to slide down and you know find their hand position here. Um, yeah. I, so are you saying that if I'm doing this, there, it might not just be my coaching? <laughs> like what it may not be you? It may not be. be it might be them. So so why am I doing that? Well, assuming the handlebars yeah. are adjusted, you know, to the highest position, because this yeah. is somebody who's really obviously uncomfortable. They're not, That's and I would point. say that this, as well as this, they both fall into the same category. It's a lack of core strength. So they're either falling into the handlebars or they're doing everything they can to pull back because they don't have the, maybe the back flexibility nor the, the core strength to feel centered and kind of anchored and supported in their saddle so then their upper body can oh. softly you know, relax. So that's fascinating. You know, not only this one, but this is this is the most famous yeah. one, right? Yeah. And and I very uncreatively always look, soften your shoulders. We you all drop your, your, you know, drop your. How long does that last? Uh, well, half the class, nothing changes. The other half for about, you know, a minute. Yeah, and then they. Lucky. Yeah. Then it's then it's. Uh, um, yeah, like, like no, that's not it. it. <laughs> so. When you say core strength, so what you're saying is if I don't have that, I'm like resting, like I'm taking the pressure, the weight off, because I'm weaker here, so I'm accommodating here or here. Yeah, yeah, and it is, you know, the foundation on the bike is to be able to anchor right here. Like where you're sitting right now, you feel that your hips right. are anchored in the saddle. Yep. Yeah. So hips are hub, hub hips. Hub uh, hips. Hub headquarters. Headquarters. Right headquarters. Hips are your headquarters. They are. Right? Rooted solid. Mm -hmm. um, what we're looking for then is um, if we don't see the good form we're looking for and we see this or we, we, we see this thing, which we see often, yeah. um, it, it could be either you know my poor coaching skills or <laughs> Uh, their poor listening skills, but it could be uh, lack of core strength. I think so we would need to train that off the bike to see better form and performance on the bike. Yeah, to help them get more bang for their buck. Yep. To really get a better return on their investment of time. Research, I did look this up, and I, um, it's a big study in the early 90s. It takes about 300 to 350 times to learn a good movement pattern to learn yep. proper, let's say, optimal, ideal yep. movement. If you're bringing something to the imbalances and the limitations and the restrictions that we're talking about, if you're bringing that to the movement pattern, it takes you three to 5,000 times to learn optimal or ideal. It's it, kind of, that's fascinating. Crazy, right? Totally crazy. So which don't add to it. Which is probably you know? why I'm so bad at tennis. I have learned <laughs> to, to, to hit the wrong way thousands of times, and I, I don't think I have enough years left to, to undo that. Anyways, it's hard to unlearn something. Exactly. It's really, really exactly. hard to unlearn. So um, anything else that we're looking for on the bike, the most common, I know there's probably lots of stuff, but so we've got the shoulder shrugging, we have the claps, um, we have piano piano this, player. yeah, the piano player. I guess head hanging, you know, but. That's a big one. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm constantly like, Try to come up here where the air is. Where the air is. Where the air is. Where the air is. Yeah. And yeah. Um, what happens, it's similar to what, like, you, I love what you said about um, 
uh, baking bread, you know, it's rising. Yeah. Instantly you see, and it's not even casual, it's like, whoa, busted, <laughs> whoa. Um, and, and, and they didn't realize it. They didn't realize yes. it. So it's this being unnoticed, yes. unassessed, yes. unaware thing. That those sleepy habits, yep. that's what robs and cheats people. And and until you bring it to light, yes, you know, they probably don't yep. even recognize it. I have a few distinct writers in mind right now. They have both the shrug and the drop. I mean, d does all of this indicate kind of oh just you gotta pay attention to basic fundamental movements. Yep. Because my older clients and, and by older, I mean 80 and 90. Yeah. And they're active and they're, you Do know, they spin? Um, two of them do. <laughs> yeah. So 30 I, wa yeah. I want to be an 80-year-old spinning. I know. <laughs> but this, this kyphotic kind of collapsing into your posture, yes. especially yes. for women. Yes. Especially uh, for women. Yep. Um, very, and tech neck is a big thing now, you know, with um, mm -hmm. where the yes. cervical spine is becoming flattened. Um, so that's a big deal. It's a, yeah, it's a huge deal actually. Yeah. What I usually encourage there, assuming that they can be comfortable in their hand in their, you know, upper body yep. position. Once you keep anchoring, the yep. only cues you're going to be able to give people on the bike, I feel, that are successful, like a, a like a, you know, a bullet cue. What's the best thing I can say right now to clean up all of that? Yep, is usually anchoring in your hips. Sometimes I come behind people and grab their hips and say, can you feel this pulling back into the saddle? That unloads as soon as you do yeah. yeah. And if you get on the bike and practice this, do this, yeah. just lean forward. The pressure goes into your wow. perineum on your, your fleshy part of your bottom and into I your love shoulders. You talk like that. <laughs> and your shoulders and your hands. Yeah? Yeah. Do you feel it? Like I on totally. the fleshy part, like you will not be a fun date later on. But if you pull back yeah. and you anchor in your saddle, now you're sitting on bones. You're sitting on your yep. skeleton. You're sitting yep. on your sitting bones. Yep. And I know sometimes you don't have the time to talk about that. Maybe you never thought about that. Maybe don't you know how to pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> sitting bones. Just <laughs> well, that one. <laughs> issue two tuberosities if you want to be specific. But that feels more, it's more efficient. Yep. It's anchored and centered you know, in the yep. saddle. So bringing that awareness to what that feels like, do some coaching around that, and maybe even talk them through what that feels like. So right. you do that in that quick second, Yeah, I totally felt that. And let me just go back to that kyphotic position. Oh. Move side to side and transverse. Twist, twist, twist. Thoracic yeah. freedom is so, it's huge, it's huge. So with that- Thoracic freedom. Yeah, and rotation. Yes. <laughs> But the, the, the collapsed chest, yeah. first of all, it affects breathing big time. Great point. Cervical, spine, yep. adds to all that tech neck stuff. Um, and the, for me, the best cue here is to anchor first and just slightly, if there were a little hook on your breastbone, oh, to pull your breastbone forward. Yep. Not to jam your shoulders down, not yep. to stick your chest out, not yep. to retract your head. Yep. But just gently draw your your breastbone forward, sternum, and, and kind of the rest follows. And the rest follows. That's yeah. why I try to identify those yeah. cues that are very yeah. like a bullet. You could rifle all around, like lengthen your neck and draw your shoulders back. Yeah, and relax in the yeah. and, you know. It's almost like you're addressing the symptoms, but not that root cause, right? Yes. So yes, yeah. Yes. So lift your chest. The rest will follow. Then yeah. you can yeah. Perfect. So that's probably the only other thing I see besides okay. the lower body chain, yep. the so arms, the shoulders, the head. The head. Um, okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So bottom line, it starts when riders walk in the room, notice how they're carrying themselves, notice their feet, how they're walking, mm -hmm. and then notice are they transferring that to the bike. Um, so we're looking for those cues you just um, went through. And now, what we're going to do is come off the bike yeah. and really talk about and show how can riders strengthen those um, key things so that they get stronger, they come back to the bike, and suddenly my coaching would look a lot better because <laughs> <laughs> when I say, like, oh, drop your, your shoulders, they yeah. can. Yeah. So, it sounds right? I think so, yeah, because a lot of the core work. Yep. 
needs to be done off the bike in order to transfer to the bike. Perfect. So that's, we're wrapping this module and um, we're, we're going to get off the bike and go to our playroom. Yeah. All right. See you there. Thanks.